Hey, I'm Scott from Stringjoy, so follow me here. You get a new set of strings, you put them onto your guitar, you're a good guitarist, so you adjust every single thing about your guitar, you get it playing just right. You move your saddles around so that your intonation is perfect, meaning when you fret the 12th fret, you're neither sharp nor flat relative to the open pitch. Everything's perfect and it sounds great up and down the fretboard, all right? So then you play on that same set of strings for a month or two or three. They still sound pretty good to you, but once you've gone through that amount of time with the set of strings and you start fretting things up high, you notice that, that intonation is somehow pulled out a little bit. Well, today we're gonna to talk about what's going on here, why it is that strings will lose their intonation as time goes on, and we're gonna talk a little bit, uh, at a layman's level at least, about what's happening in terms of the materials of the string that's causing it to lose that intonation over time. I'll meet you inside. So I just changed the strings in this guitar not very long ago, and it's been set up really well by our artist guy, Jason, who's an awesome road tech for a bunch of big names for a long time. I get spoiled in that way. Uh, but because of all that, the harmonic and the 12th fret and everything intonates just right. I check in the snark tuner, and it all looks great. But I can tell you right now, if I keep these strings in this guitar uh, for another six months or something like that, eventually that intonation will start to suffer. So let's talk about what is happening there and why that is. So if we were talking about a string theoretically, we would be talking about it as being completely uniform across its entire length. So the core wire inside would have the same diameter across the entire length. The wrap wire would be applied with the exact same amount of torque or compression at the exact same angle. So the space between those wraps is exactly the same throughout the entire string length, all that. And this theoretical dream string that we have here, if you set the intonation on it and nothing ever changed, it would just continue to intonate perfectly. It wouldn't change anything at all. But unfortunately, in the real world, things do change. Even if you start with a guitar string that is that perfect and made with that level of precision, over time, it's going to morph and shift, and as a result, it's gonna perform differently. But the reality is, over the course of a string's life, all of these stresses and strains and accumulations of different sweat and gunk and dirt take their toll. And over that time, that string will, will change a little bit. This could be little things like that string getting kinked or ground down around a fret. Um, it could be just the string becoming a little bit uneven as it's elongated constantly, or just developing a lot of micro cracks which occur from being constantly fatigued, even when it's not going past you know enough pressure for the string to break, it's still wearing it down a little bit. Over the course of time, all of these different factors add up to make your string uneven over the course of its length. Even if it started out perfectly even, um, it's not going to be that way at the end. For example, you'll have a lot more sweat on your strings across the fretboard than you will at the area that's not on the fretboard, you know, in addition to everything else we talked about. The result of all that is instead of, you know, looking for the resonance of a perfectly uniform string across the entire length uh, of the scale, you have a string that, you know, has some thicker points or some more worn down points and all that, so it resonates a little bit unevenly. And that string is going to intonate differently, uh, you know, at different positions on the fretboard than a string that is perfectly uniform. So this is, for one, the reason why you always set your intonation for a new set of strings, because you're ideally not going to have any of those issues that can happen over time affecting it, and you're setting it to the proper point to get perfect intonation. But over time, no matter what strings you're using, uh, these sorts of problems are going to cause it to not intonate well at the 12th fret, or really any other fret for that matter. One thing that's interesting to me is that people talk about coded and treated strings, you know, as though they, they last forever. And in some ways they, you know, will, they have certain advantages over uncoded strings in terms of longevity. However, things like this, where we're talking about fatigue of the actual metal or, you know, changing the shape of the actual metal around the frets, things like that are still going to happen to coded strings. The metal itself is still undergoing the exact same stresses and strains as an uncoated string, even if they can't accumulate gunk and dirt and build up like that. Uh, as a result, your coated strings, even though they might sound good well into six months on, are still going to lose intonation eventually. Uh, on every guitar that might be a little bit different, it's not to say that the coated strings in your guitar you know, sound terrible and you don't know it or anything like that, um, but the same thing will happen at the exact same rate with coated strings as it will with uncoated strings. Now, round core strings, in contrast to hexagonal core strings, like a lot of the ones that we make, we make some round core strings as well, have the additional trouble of, because the wrap wire is not as well bound to the core wire itself, over time, you not only have all those other things to worry about, you also have the wrap wire separating slightly 
from the core wire and vibrating at its own um, bit to kind of change its position around the length of the string to worry about as well. So round core strings can cause even more trouble um, with intonation over the long haul uh, than hex core strings. So that's one thing to keep in mind too if you're utilizing round core strings. It's sort of just a reality of that more vintage style of string. Does this mean that you have to change your guitar strings every month or every two months? No, not at all. I keep strings on my own guitars sometimes for eight, nine, ten months, um, partly because I like to see how they wear in at different points there, but partly because I can. They haven't broken and they sound all right. Really, it comes down to how much of a priority things like perfect intonation are for you. For some guitarists, it drives them absolutely insane to not have the intonation perfect at the 12th fret. For other guitarists, it's not as big of a deal or they can't even really hear that much of a difference. So it's all about finding out what's right for you. But the thing that I think is most interesting about this uh, this topic, and one of the reasons that I'm glad somebody asked it, um, is that good strings, bad strings, coded strings, uncoded strings, they'll all have the same thing happen. Uh, the, the core metal itself, the high carbon steel, unless it's become aged prematurely with one company versus another, it's going to undergo the same fatigue, and it's going to react fairly similarly to that fatigue over time. Um, you know, whether that be the frets themselves or the micro cracks that form from bending it uh, over and over again. So, you know, regardless of the quality of strings that you have or how much you love a particular brand of strings, this is something that your guitar is always going to be susceptible to. You're going to have to change things eventually if you do want to keep your intonation perfect. All right, so since we're talking about intonation, today's question is going to be related to a guitarist that I think always has very good intonation, and that is the Edge. The reason I say that is because he's using digital layers that don't have a ton of modulation a lot of the time on them. He's playing way up at the 12th fret, and despite that, you don't hear these weird warbles or out of pitch um, elements to his sound. That always sounds dead on, it sounds just right. So, I wanna know in that spirit what your very favorite edge riff is. For me, it was always that uh, where the streets have no name um, dotted delay part. I absolutely love that. We ripped that off when I was playing in church when I was younger. Uh, to, to use on a bunch of different songs, actually. But I want to know what your favorite edge riff is down below, and if you have any questions about intonation or anything like that, of course, let us know and we'll be happy to help.